So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do some survey analyses. And in this one, we're going to be looking at the survey on extroversion. So these eight items right here. Now you notice this is actually broken up into two factors or two components of extroversion. So here we have the social factor of extroversion, which include things like how talkative someone is, but there's also the need for excitement aspect of extroversion too, such as how being how full of energy someone is. Now you notice that some of these items are reverse scored, meaning that they're the opposite of being extroverted. So like with the first item here being talkative, that's being extroverted. And in this case, the way it's scored, a higher number means someone strongly agrees to being talkative. So higher numbers mean that someone's highly extroverted. However, with the second item here being reserved, this is reverse scored because a higher level of agreement with this would actually mean that someone's more introverted. So the first thing we're going to do is go through these and figure out which ones of these are basically pointed in the wrong direction, where a high score actually means that someone's introverted. So for example, reserved is one of those reverse scored items. And so to mark that down, we're just going to add a, um, uh, what do you call it? That little line thing. And then the uppercase R meaning that's reverse scored. Now being assertive, that's being extroverted. So that's totally fine. But being shy, we're also going to add an R to that as well. Oops. Uh, being full of energy, that's being extroverted but being bored easily. Oh, actually, that is actually also being extroverted as well. It's a high need for excitement. Uh, I guess the last one here that needs to be reverse scored is being quiet. So we'll add an uppercase R to that one as well. So all we're doing is marking down in the name which ones need to be reverse scored. These are the items that we need to flip the scale on, turning ones into fives, twos into fours, and so on. So to do that reverse scoring, we're gonna go up to transform, recode into different variables, and since we've already uh, located the ones that need to be reverse scored, it's really easy to pop those then into the numeric variable box. And basically we're gonna give them the same name as they have before, just minus that underscore R. So this one will be extroversion underscore social underscore two. And I'll just sort of copy that and make it a little bit easier to create these same names. This one belongs to the excite factor. So I'll change this to excite and it's the third item. So after you've given them the same name, just minus the underscore R, then we're gonna flip the scale by going to old and new values. And here we're gonna take the old value and turn it into its opposite. So if it's a one on the one to five scale, the opposite of that on the scale would be a five. Similarly, if it's a two, the opposite of that scale would be a four. And if it's a three, since that's right in the middle of the scale, it'll remain a three. But then we'll go backwards from there. So a four will become a two and then a five will become a one. A nice way to check to make sure you haven't missed anything is if you go in columns, it should count one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. And if this was a one to a seven scale, then it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So it just has to include all of the types of items you can have in the scale. So that looks good, so we'll click continue and okay. And basically that'll put our items right here. One thing I like to do too is just copy the labels from the original items. So number two on the social scale would be reserved. So we can copy that one in there. Four is shy. And then the third one of the excite scale is quiet. That way we remember what these items originally referred to, uh, but also now we have them pointed in the right direction. From this point on, actually, we won't end up using any of these that are pointed in the wrong direction. We'll always use the ones that we've just created. So first thing we wanna do is to figure out if these items are in fact reliable. So one thing we can do is a Chromebox Alpha. That's a good way to test to see if there's inter-item reliability or consistency. Basically means are all the items measuring the same thing? So to do a Chromebox Alpha, we're gonna to go to Analyze, Scale, Reliability Analysis. Now we're gonna look at the social items separately from the Excite items, since they are part of two different factors. So for this one, we're gonna put in all the social items. We'll put in social one. We're gonna skip this one that ends in an underscore R. And we'll pop in social two, the one we made right here. Go back up, pick up social three, and then again, we're gonna get social four because that's the version that's pointing in the correct direction. So after you've done that, that's all you need to do. Just put in the items for the whole scale and then click okay. And basically what a Chromebook Alpha looks at is the average level of correlation between all the items. 
So if someone's strongly agreeing that they're talkative, they should also probably strongly agree that they're assertive and strongly disagree that they're reserved or shy. That would mean that all of them are pointed in the right direction and measuring the same thing. And what we want to see is an alpha score that's at least a 0.7 or higher. And in fact, that's what we have here. So if you look at the alpha score, Chromebox Alpha, we have a 0.725. So that actually means that we have good levels of inter-item reliability with that scale. So to write up something like this, I'm just going to open up a Word document here. I would just write something like the social subscale of extroversion showed acceptable levels of reliability. And then I can put in the alpha score by just putting in an A, lowercase a for alpha, and then putting in this number right here. But we're going to round it to the, uh, the hundredth place, so it'll be 0.73. And then if we italicize the A there, that's all we need to do. So basically the extroversion scale or the social subscale of extroversion was reliable. Now we can do the same thing with the excite ones. So if we go again, analyze, scale, reliability analysis, this time we'll kick all of those and put in the excite items. So excite one, excite two, excite three, and excite four. You notice I skipped the one that had an underscore R in it. So if I click okay, and I check out this result, this one actually showed less than acceptable levels of reliability. It had an alpha score below a 0.7. In this case, it was 0.569. So in this case, the, the write-up would be a little different. We'd say the excitement subscale of extroversion showed unacceptable levels of reliability. And then once again, we'll put in the lowercase a, and this one round to a 0.57. So you can see the write-up either way is not that different. You're just saying whether or not it met that threshold of being a 0.7 or higher. If it did, it was an acceptable level of reliability or is reliable. If it didn't, it was an unacceptable level or it was unreliable. So moving on from that, one thing we might want to test out is to see if these extroversion items correlate with something that we would expect them to. In this case, I have a measure of neuroticism right here, or it's an average of a uh, neuroticism scale. And typically, if people are higher in extroversion, they're lower in neuroticism. So we would expect a negative correlation there. Now, to see if that holds true, we need to also create one variable that is the average of all of these extroversion items. So to do that, let's go ahead and uh, create that. We're going to go transform compute variable because we're going to be using some math here. And for this one, basically, I'll create uh, an, a variable called extroversion. And this is going to be the average of all of these items. So to average it, we can add them all together and divide by the total number. So putting them in parentheses first, the ones we're going to add in, we're going to add in item one. And it doesn't matter what order we put this in, but I'll, I'll keep it in order here. Uh, so item two, item two R, we're going to skip over, but we're going to add the item two that we created. That's pointed in the correct direction. And so we're just going to add them all in. We're going to include all the items this time from the social and excite subscales because those are all part of extroversion. Yeah, let's see, pop in, there we go. And so what we wanna see here is that we haven't missed any items. We have social one, two, three, four, excite one, two, three, four. And since we have a total of eight items, we'll end by dividing by eight. So after you have all this, this is gonna create our average. We'll click okay. And it'll pop up at the bottom of our data set. I like to give this a label, so we'll call this extra version because the label end up showing up in our graphs. And if we go to data view, we should see that these are basically, you know, decimal places like 3.25, 2.38. And one thing you'll notice is that we don't have anything below a one or above a five because we're creating averages of one to five items. So since they're all within that range, that means we probably did it correctly. If you notice a number that was below one or above a five, then we probably did, would have done something wrong. We'd have to redo it. But anyway, that looks good. So to test our final hypothesis that neuroticism and extroversion should be negatively correlated together if we're doing a good job measuring extroversion, let's go to analyze, correlate, bivariate. And we're just gonna pop in our two items, extroversion and neurotic. We can just click okay with this and it'll tell us if they're correlated or not. And here, if we look right here, we're just going to pay attention to where neuroticism and extroversion meet in the table. So this set of three numbers right here. 
it looks like we do ha have a negative correlation. It's negative 0.259. So a little bit on the weak side, it's around a 0.2 or 0.3, but it is significant because right here it says sig two tailed, it is at or below a 0 0.05. So it's definitely significant. So to write this part up, let me put this over here. We're basically going to say that it was found that extroversion was negatively correlated with neuroticism. So I always like to write the result in plain English first. And then basically we're gonna put in our R statistics and I'll just do some placeholders for right now. So the first thing we're gonna do, oop, not quite sure what it did there, uh, put in a lowercase r, then we're gonna do our degrees of freedom. And then the R value followed by the P value. Now I'm already italicizing the parts that we need to italicize there. Now the only thing it doesn't tell you outright is the degrees of freedom, but for R, the degrees of freedom is N minus two. So the our N is 436. So 436 minus two equals 434. Our R value is what it's showing us right here, the Pearson correlation value, and it's negative. 0.26, we ran that to the hundredth place. And then finally for the p-value, it's so low, we can't actually report it. For example, we couldn't write equals 0 0.00, that's too low. So what we change it into said is less than 0.01, because that's as low as we can report it in APA formatting. So basically this confirmed our hypothesis, we're probably me measuring extroversion pretty well, because as expected, it's negatively correlated with neuroticism, which is basically how depressed or anxious people are. We'd expect if people are highly sociable, they're probably less depressed. Now, the last thing, since this is a correlation, we can create a graph for this, a scatter plot. So let's go to graphs, legacy dialogues, scatter slash dot. And we're gonna keep it at simple scatter, click define. And then we're just gonna pop one of our variables into the Y axis and one of the X axis. It really doesn't matter which one we put in which axis. I'll just put neurotic in the Y axis and extra version in the x-axis, but you can easily flip those, it'd be the same result. So if we click OK, it'll generate our scatter plot graph here. As you can tell, you can kind of tell it's a little bit of a negative skew, but it's kind of hard to read exactly where the best fitting line would be. So let's go ahead and add that regression line to really show the relationship between neuroticism and extroversion. To do that, we're gonna double click to go into chart editor. And then once that pops up, go up to elements, and click fit line at total. That'll put the regression line on there. We close this, it goes back to original graph, and there you can really see that there is a negative trend there. The higher people are in extroversion, the lower they are in neuroticism and vice versa. So we're just gonna copy this. We'll go copy as image, or if you're on Windows, you go copy special and then select image. And then we always are gonna put this on a separate page. So I'll paste it in there. We'll give a nice title like figure one, correlation between extroversion and neuroticism. And then of course, since we have a figure right here, we need to reference it up here where we're talking about it. So we'll put in figure one right here. And you notice I don't italicize it when it's in the main body, the figure one, but I do italicize it when it's on the figure page. So there you go, that's how you do some basic survey analyses, including uh, creating average survey scores like the extroversion score, looking at the reliability of these uh, scales, or in this case, subscales, and then seeing if our scale is related with another scale in the expected way.